Hey there, and welcome to my very first Ask Me Anything session. I put out a post with the prompt for you to give me any of the questions that you have. I do try to answer as many as I can in the comments on my weekly videos, but I know sometimes things can slip by or maybe you had a question that didn't match up to a video. So I wanted to give you the space to ask any and all of your burning questions. And I wanted to try out maybe making a few videos where I go through some of those questions just to you know continue engaging with this community because I appreciate you all so, so much. So this is gonna be really casual here. I'm just going to read through the comments that I got on my post and respond to those questions in more of a casual and candid way. So let's dive in. So the first question here is, how difficult could it be to publish a book translated to English in the North American market? And then this person has a follow-up question. So translated works, this is a great question. If your book was originally written in another language, it can certainly find a publisher in the US if it is translated into English. Think about the popularity of Elena Ferrante's series. They skyrocketed when they were released in the US and those are originally written in Italian. So you can absolutely successfully publish in English in the US if the manuscript was originally written or published in another country. However, your publishing journey is going to look a little bit different and it is most likely going to be a little bit more challenging for you. There are kind of two routes that you can take here. First, you can seek a publisher in your original language country. So say the book is written in Japanese. You can seek a publisher in Japan first and then the publisher in Japan, if they see appeal across continents, across countries, will likely make a deal to publish that in another country. So they'll basically sell the rights to an American or UK publisher to translate the work and then publish it under, you know, a new cover, new title, whatever, in the other country. That's one route that international translated publishing takes. The other route would be for you personally to work on a translation that might you know, involve some upfront cost. If you are hiring a translator, you are probably going to want an editor to make sure that once it is translated, it, the prose is flowing smoothly, as smooth as it does in the other language. So I would recommend that route. If you really don't see a opportunity for you to publish it in the original language and really the book should be published in English first for whatever reason, then I would try to work on the translation on your own. Or of course, with the help of translators and editors. And then you would seek a literary agent in the US who could then present that book to the US market. So the follow-up question from this same person is, how important do you think is Frankfurt Book Fair in the editorial world? Frankfurt was something that we talked about a lot when I was working at Penguin Random House. It is something that the higher level editors would attend, literary agents would attend. It's not something that you as the author would necessarily be involved in. It's really more for publishing professionals, but it really is a great place for them to connect. How I mentioned earlier that if you were to publish the book in your home country or whatever country that speaks the language your book is written in first before English, it is the case that the original publisher could network at Frankfurt with a US publishing house and they could make a deal to sell the rights and translate that book and publish it. Those types of translation deals absolutely happen at Frankfurt. It is focused on international rights especially, but again, it's more for publishing professionals rather than authors directly. I do have a video that talks about international publishing, so I will add a link in the description. I recommend checking that out. I get into some of this conversation about how to publish books across different countries and different languages in that video. All right, the next question here is, I would love your advice on scene transitions. I have been told I write nice singular scenes, but I struggle to tie them together seamlessly into a story. Any advice? So my advice here is to map out the overarching journey that your characters are going on from beginning to end. There are different approaches to this. Different people have different editorial philosophies on how a book should be structured, but ultimately there should be a beginning point, 
and an end point that your characters get to, some kind of transformative journey that they are undertaking, and then each scene should ladder up and get them closer and closer to that point. So think about your protagonists. Where are they mentally, physically, emotionally at the beginning of the story? Where do you want them at the end? What's that sense of resolution? And then you can look at each scene individually and order them in such a way that they all ladder up and crescendo to that beautiful climactic moment and then that moment of resolution at the end where they achieve whatever that journey is that you set out for them. Okay, the next question here. I'm 17 and wondering if the publishing route would look any different since I'm not 18 yet. So granted, there are going to be more limited opportunities for you, especially if you are under 18. From my experience, literary agents are typically working with writers past the age of 18, typically in their 20s or so. That doesn't mean it's off limits for you. I think there is a situation in which you might, if you're still 17, have to get parental consent or parental involvement when you are trying to engage a literary agent or a publisher. Something that would be really good for you at this stage of your writing career, however, is to publish short stories in literary magazines where there really is not as much of a barrier for younger writers. In some cases, unfortunately, they might still not be able to publish you until you're 18, but in some cases they might, and there's almost less at stake with that, and it really helps you boost your writing credentials so that when you ultimately write and finish a full-length book and you want to get a literary agent, you can say, look, I've had these publications, you know, in the past few years when I was starting my writing career. And that's really going to illustrate that you're committed to writing and that you already have some good publications under your belt. Okay, the next question here is, I'm kind of an introvert and I don't like the idea of dealing with beta readers and my family doesn't read for entertainment. So can I just hire an editor even on the first pass? Is this inadvisable for reasons other than money? I recognize that more eyes is better, but is this other way done by noobs? Does it work? Um, and there's another question. So totally understand this. Writing is a you know solitary act in a lot of ways. So some people don't have that community of someone who can read their work and provide them constructive feedback. And when it comes to family, it's often very difficult for them to provide you subjective feedback. Often they're just going to give you you know, compliments on your writing because they don't want to be mean or maybe they don't have the expertise or the ability to actually give you real constructive feedback. So yes, I think it is completely fine for you to engage an editor at the, an early stage of your draft. I've certainly worked with authors who, you know, I'm actually the first person who has read their manuscript cover to cover other than them. That's a really special kind of engagement. It does likely mean it's going to be a bit more involved you're likely going to have more work to do if you haven't already gotten some big picture feedback from a constructive partner of some kind. But if you have you know, the investment, if you have the time and you have the desire to work with an editor, nothing should hold you back from pursuing that. It is only going to strengthen your manuscript. The second part of this question is, do you think it's better to work with say three different editors or stick to just one throughout the process. This comes down to the editorial process and the different types of editing. So this first stage of editing is what we call structural or developmental editing, where we're not really working on a sentence level yet. We're not necessarily fixing all the comma placements or the typos. We're really reading for the story progression, making sure the plot all makes sense making sure the characters have strong development, making sure the twists work, making sure the setting is established. All of those big picture elements is what we are addressing in the first stage of editing. That is a specific skill set, and you would work with someone who specializes ideally in developmental or structural editing. That is a type of editing that I personally work on. The next stage of editing is what we call copy editing, related to also line editing, where we are actually smoothing out the grammar of each individual sentence, making sure that it flows beautifully from sentence to sentence and making sure your prose is really clear and clean and checking for consistencies too, like you're calling the characters by the same name all the way throughout the novel, things like that. Copy editors have a very specific skill set. They create style sheets, make sure that you know the whole novel is consistent. It's a whole other type of skill that personally I didn't choose to develop as much as my structural editing skill set. So for that reason, 
I recommend working with a different editor for the copy editing or line editing phase. At a traditional publishing house, that is how it works. You first undergo a developmental edit or several developmental edits with your acquisitions editor, the one who bought the book from the literary agent, and only after you have gone through the developmental editing process does the manuscript go to a separate copy editor. I think that works well because then the copy editor is going to have fresh eyes on the manuscript and they're likely going to be able to catch little inconsistencies and things that the developmental editor and you were just too deep in the story to be able to catch and surface on your own. So I do recommend working with a different editor for that type of work because it is a different skill set. And then finally, proofreading is, you know, the last stage, particularly if you're going to self-publish, you definitely want to make sure you have a proofreader. I think that could be the same person as the copy editor. However, there is a benefit again to having fresh eyes on the story just because your copy editor will have already read it and having someone just looking for typos, which is what proofreading is, it can be beneficial to have a completely fresh set of eyes. So in that case, you might end up having three different editors, but I would say it really depends on who you choose, what services they offer and what their specialties are. All right, so another question here is, do agents consider queries from authors residing in a different country from where they are located? Are there any drawbacks to doing so or any reason you would recommend against querying agents from a different country? It is absolutely possible to get a literary agent who is not in your home country, particularly agents in the US and the UK are quite intertwined. The publishing industries do interconnect in many ways. Typically books are published very close together in the UK and in the US or simultaneously on the same day. So it's almost interchangeable whether you get a US or a UK agent if you reside in one of those two countries. I had an author who I worked with who had offers from both US and UK agents and she was based in the US, her story was based in the US, but she actually went with the UK agent. And that was because she felt that their creative visions aligned better than the US agent. So when it comes down to it, it's about finding that perfect agent match who sees your vision for the book and wants to bring it out into the world. I don't think it matters if that person is in your home country or is not. However, if your book does have a very specific market, a very specific appeal, then I would consider where the literary agent is based a little more seriously. If it is, you know, something that's only going to appeal in the European market, much more likely than the US market, it probably makes sense to go with a UK agent, for instance. All right, last question for this first Ask Me Anything video. What are your thoughts on writer's retreats as a means of improving your craft? I think writer's retreats can be great if that environment helps your work and if you find that a productive and helpful environment. Some people do, some people don't. So it's really up to you. Also, there is obviously a cost in the cases of most writers retreats that you will have to consider for yourself. But if you really thrive on the community aspect of writing, if you love writing workshops and giving feedback and getting feedback from fellow writers, a retreat could be a great place to do that also. If you have a home life that isn't necessarily as conducive to writing, you're dealing with kids, you're dealing with pets, you're dealing with work, maybe you work from home and it's hard to you know, separate work life from home life, a retreat can be a really great way to energize yourself, put yourself in a new creative place mentally, and it can be you know, that safe haven, productive space for a lot of writers. But if you don't need it, if you don't want it, if you don't get that type of benefit from it, then I would say, you know, you don't necessarily need to go to a writing retreat. And you definitely don't need to go to a writing retreat to get a book written, to get a story written, to do any of that. But it can be a great place if it works for you. Thanks so much to everyone who sent in one of these questions for my first Ask Me Anything. Feel free to continue asking me anything or respond to my commentary today in the comments below. And stay tuned for some more Ask Me Anything videos that I have coming up and will be posting in the coming weeks. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope your writing, your querying, your publishing is going well.